Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic and Fortean skeptic. I am naked today to show how frail humanity really is. Without our clothing, without our technology and everything else, what are we except an animal with two hands, which don't really have much in the way of claws, uh, teeth, which aren't even really uh, much in the way of biting, and for those of us visually impaired, um, seeing everything as a blur, trying to run around, maybe uh, trying to escape predatory animals, or trying to live in a post-apocalyptic uh, society where there is minimal, um, how shall we say, resources left, either ecological or um, material, to help uh, provide a comfortable life for us and our offspring. Here's the problem. We are facing, uh, we are living in a perfectly good technological society right now. We have um, practically the best so far uh, of everything to offer, you know, and we're constantly improving technology all the time. There is, however, one small problem. We are working on a finite resource base. Without this finite resource base, um, technology would not have developed in the first place. Uh, without the concentrated uh, deposits of iron, nickel, uh, copper, aluminum, very um, oil, uh, fossil fuels, without these basic essentials, we would not have been able to develop industrial society as we know it. And unfortunately, we are starting to run low on all of these quantities. Um, there's some, uh, if you go to infomine.org and take a look at the uh, prices for the past 15 years, and we're not talking, we're not just taking into account the uh, inflation of the U.S. dollar, um, there has been a dramatic rise in the prices for, um, the, for uh, these various metals, uh, for, for all the various metals, for example. And the reason being, well, there's actually three reasons, one of which is control of the market. Um, the companies will, of course, want to release it on a slow amount to try to, you know, maintain the price. But they would want to maintain it at a constantly high price, not necessarily constantly increase the price, because it would decrease their market. They would, uh, they would know that. The second issue is inflation of the U.S. dollar. You know, uh, as uh, the second, um, the third issue uh, is one of two. Uh, one of which is a growing population, which means an increase in demand for all the basics for indu for industry. But the second of which. Uh, you know, and uh, copper is not really useful for jewelry or the like, so, uh, you know, it's better used for electrical wires and electrical appliances, so that's where that primarily comes in. The same with nickel, iron, you know, these are essentials for industry. So, you know, we have a growing demand for it, which will uh, speed up the use of the resources, uh, combined with the fact that we are also running out of these resources at a simultaneous rate. Now, again, I could go into the technical math of it, but I think you get the idea. Roughly, what, according to what experts have been saying, uh, we're looking at about 50 to 70 years worth of resources left before we end up collapsing. Um, let me tell you briefly, uh, let me give you, I've already done a video uh, in the absence of logic as to what happens uh, when we don't um, take care of this stuff and about how the collapse of society. Let me spell it out for you this way. Penn and Teller did a show called Bullshit, where they basically said, um, you know, if the end of the world really came, just buy some matches and a gun and you'd be fine. That would be true, only as long as the bullets lasted. Without machine shops to recycle stuff, without machine shops to make fresh bullets, without recycling plants to, uh, you know, cover back the ore, and without basic metals to be able to build all this stuff, we will collapse. And here's the here, uh, here's a couple of the major things. One of which, there's a possibility we could end up resorting to cannibalism. Uh, for those who, um, uh, for those of you who don't know. Um, there are the likes of Jeffrey Dahmer out there who would be more than willing, if food was not around, to turn to each other to uh, start eat, uh, to start you know and uh, as you know to start turning on each other as food uh, in order to survive. Um, there have been plenty of uh, pilgrim trips in history, which I think would be a perfect example of that, uh, or that uh, famous case we've all heard about about that plane crash where um, you know everybody ended up drawing lots and eating the other people just in order to survive. Um, you know, when you're forced to, people will resort to cannibalism. Um, let me see what other major issues. Oh yes, um, you've heard about the possibilities of nuclear war and all that. Well, here's another thing. Um, what do you think is going to happen when humans are trying to, uh, particularly the West and everything else, what do you think when governments and corporations are trying to maintain their monopolies um, on very, you know, are trying to maintain their monopolies and uh, countries are trying to maintain their status as superpowers? Well, they're going to start fighting over the scant remaining resources. That includes over the remaining fossil fuels and the other stuff they haven't transferred over. So, you know, in the 
So from that, you can bet that there's going to that World War III is at least uh, you know has a, a good shot of breaking out. And even if, and here's the big if, even hypothetically, if um, they don't use nuclear weapons, and you know they even if best case scenario they don't attack civilians, they don't start using nuclear weapons. Um, you know, there's still the probability of millions upon millions of dying, like the first two world wars, just largely because of the, you know, just largely because of the fact of the scale of this of this si uh, size of a war. Let's not also count the fact. Let's not also forget the fact that at least three billion of our world's population, maybe more, um, you know, China, India, and probably Africa, at least that we know of, um, are living in sub, um, you know, are living in substandard uh, areas. Now, if China gets involved in a World War III, that will mean billions dying because of the fact that, you know, uh, well, you know, like I said, their population is about a billion size, you know, uh, several millions more dying. And here's the other thing. The bulk of people, again, remember, even in China, even if they're developing a first world industry level, which they aren't anywhere close to yet, they're still living, uh, much like India and the rest of the third world, in um, conditions where they rely a huge amount on um, crops and other imports from um from us in order to try, you know, in food aid, in order to be able to survive, food and medicine aid. And here's the problem. Um, because of the fact they're already living in poor countries with several thousand dying a day anyway, um, without the food, that toll could end up reaching a few billion. I mean, like, we could have a severe uh, starvation, which could end up, you know, totaling at least, you know, two, maybe even three billion. So, you know, so at the very least, like, we're, you know, so either way, we could end up getting between 60, 70, 80, or 90 percent of the human race dying off from a, um, well, yeah, let's see, three-fifths is sixty percent. So yeah, um, you know, or well, actually, no, three billion out of seven billion. So yeah, between fifty to seven, uh, between fifty and ninety percent, depending on best case scenario, uh, people dying from starvation, to worst case scenario, uh, nuclear weapons uh, killing off ninety percent. Either way, uh, we're looking at a severe um, cutback of the human race. Also, uh, without technology on our level, uh, bear in mind that a medieval level society, which was what we'd probably end up living at for the longest period of time before having to gear down again, um, at a medieval level of society, uh, a world population can only be sustained of about 500 million people. So that would actually mean, um, you know, over generations as well. Um, actually, yeah, it would, either way, with the techno-ecological crunch, um, if you're not counting nuclear weapons, it's just a matter of time. But the human race would end up between another five, maybe six decades of degrading back to, say, well, let's see. Assuming the solar panels lasted us for 40 years. Okay, let's put it this way. Best case scenario, century. Uh, either way, whichever way you look at it, we're looking at a roughly a 90 to 95% dieback of the human race. Um which, of course, ends up meaning that the human race is not necessarily at their best level. Now, we were the dominant species for a while, but, you know, bear in mind, without the technological infrastructure at even a medieval level, we, stand, we don't stand a chance of much of survival even at 500 million people. Yeah, that's true. She and I want to be able to have kids in the future. If you want the human race to survive, please support space colonization. There's enough resources there to last us for the next 50,000 years. The entire planet living at the North American standard without any environmental degradation. The choice is yours. Personally, I'd like to see our species survive. I hope you do too. See you around.